Hello everyone and welcome back to Web Security. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you all about the structured query language commonly referred to as SQL. So SQL, structured query language, is a very commonly used language for manipulating and accessing and querying data. So SQL is a language in and of itself, of course, you know, structured query language. It is a language and if you want to understand how web applications work, uh, particularly those that use structured query language, which is again, very common for manipulating and accessing data, we need to understand what it is that the structured query language is. So I'm going to be talking to you all about the basics of structured query language, SQL. So the first operation that is very important and good to know about is the create table operation. So SQL operates off of a paradigm of you have these databases and within those databases you have tables and then within those tables you have rows and you have columns. So you can kind of think of something like some sort of spreadsheet application, right? You can have a bunch of pages in your spreadsheet application and you have rows and columns with holding data. So the first thing we want to be able to do is we want to be able to create a table that's going to store data. So in order to do that, we're going to use the create table operation and we're going to specify some table name as well as some column names uh, and potentially column attributes. So for example, if we want to create some users table, we run the create table users and then we're specifying username and password as two of the columns within that. And in doing so, we've suddenly birthed a new table within our database called users and it's ready to have a bunch of users with a username and password. So right now we've just got an empty table with users, username and password are the attributes, the columns of a particular user, which is some row within that users table. So now if we wanna add some data to that table, we wanna use the insert into uh, function, which is we can insert into some table name values and then specify the values you want to insert in, in order of those columns. So for example, if we want to insert the admin admin user, we can run insert into users values admin admin. Note the uh, double quotes here, or you could use single quotes, um, but we are inserting these string values into our table and suddenly we have a concept of a user, some data backing a user concept where we have one of them which is an admin whose username is admin and whose password is admin as well. And if we want to continue on to insert more data into this table, right, every, every time we perform one of these operations, we're inserting another row into the table. Now we have Connor, password123. And finally, we add Canac with Hunter2 as a password. So we've got this, this table set up with some data with three users in it, each with a unique username and password. And you know, you could imagine now we're ready to start having a web application, right? You can imagine some web application had a create user page and when you went to create that user, well, now we need to run this operation of inserting that user into our database. Our database stores data, right? It stores all the data that's going to be critical for this web application. Now, if we want to start querying that data, we're gonna use the select operation. So we can select some number of columns from some table name where there can be some conditions on what kind of uh, rows you want to select from that, what kind of query you want to perform in order to determine what you want to select. So for example, in the base case, we can select username, comma, password from users, and that's just going to return uh, all of the usernames and passwords of the table, right? We're going to get all these rows with uh, different um, columns within those rows, and we can access it. We can know all of the usernames and passwords of all of the users within our database. On the other hand, we might just select the users. You can imagine a web application. You might want to know who all the users are in my web application. We're just going to query for all of the usernames within the web application, uh, within the database. And to do so, we just select username from users and suddenly we have all of the usernames within our users table. You can also, if you don't want to specify um, particular columns you want to select, if you just want to select them all, you can use this star uh, token and the star token just means hey give me all of the columns give me all of the attributes 
of all of the users now. Because again, we haven't specified a condition yet. We're just selecting all, everything from all of the users. So we're gonna get all of the usernames and passwords. Now we might also do select star from users where username equals admin. So we might want to find information about some particular user who's in this case username is admin. So we query, hey, give me everything about the user, the users in this case, whose username is admin. Well, it turns out there's one user whose username is admin and this the, the result contains the information about them. Uh, alternatively, you might imagine some login operation, right? Hey, give me all of the users whose username is admin and whose password is password. Well, it turns out as we kind of look to the left, right, the, the admin user has a username of admin and a password of admin, so no, no rows are returned. There's no users who have a username of admin and password of password, so nothing comes back. It's an empty, empty result. Uh, of course, if we log in correctly, if we supply a username of admin and a password of admin, then sure enough, we find that user whose username is admin and whose password is admin. Hopefully it's clear how you can imagine using this language with this data to build up a web application with users and have this login operation, right? Your login operation is gonna look something like this. Okay, now if you wanna be able to add data and query data, you probably also wanna be able to delete data. So we have this delete from table name where conditions, and this allows us to conditionally start deleting data. Uh, so for example, delete from users where username equals canx. So we just deleted the canx user. They're no longer going to exist in the database. The data for them, if we perform a further query, it's nothing's gonna come up. We've deleted that row, we've deleted that user. Uh, alternatively, rather than just uh, inserting and deleting data and querying it, you might also want to update data. So we have update, table name, set, some set of assignments, where conditions. So in this case, we are changing a password. You can imagine an operation where you might want a user to be able to change their password. So we say update users, set password to password 456, where username equals Connor. And suddenly Connor's uh, password is no longer password 123, it is password 456. Connor just performed a uh, password update operation in the uh, kind of more uh, specific to a user management uh, web application. You can imagine this operation being important. Um, we also have the capability of unioning two queries together. When we select data, select bits of data, maybe you select from one table and select from another table, you might want to union that together. In this case, I'm going to show you, you know, you might, uh, I don't know what operation this would correspond into where you'd want to do this, but you can perform this operation. You might select username from users and then union that in with select password from users. And suddenly you're just going to end up with a bunch of rows with just one column. So this isn't two columns anymore, it's just one column and we have the usernames and the passwords in this column. You're gonna notice here that it's uh, being labeled as usernames even though the right hand is kind of passwords. Uh, traditionally when that, that result comes back, it's just gonna all get merged into the first selection's uh, attribute names. So that first selection is selecting for usernames which means that first column's attribute name, that first column's uh, name is going to be username and that's just going to carry on. Uh, it's just going to use that as the default uh, label for that column. Not super important necessarily, but that's kind of what's going on there, why we're calling it all usernames. Now we also have this concept of a schema table, which isn't an operation in and of itself, but it turns out you have this default table that in this case we're, we're looking specifically at SQLite though there's also like MySQL and Postgres and all these other database uh, management systems that have slightly different dialects to SQL. In this case, we're looking at SQLite, which is kind of the considered the simple one. This, the simplest one is really just backed by a, a file on your file system. It's a, the, very, the very simple database solution here. Um, and it has this concept of a schema table that is called SQLite underscore master. And SQLite underscore master has a whole bunch of rows and columns. And one of those columns is named table underscore name or TBL underscore name. And if you wanted to query all of the names of all the tables, an operation you could do is to actually query that SQLite master table, select the table names from that, and you're gonna get all of the table names. This is kind of a, a meta operation that might be useful depending on if you need these kind of meta operations to start performing queries on the, the database at like a meta level. 
um, that all of the popular uh, database management systems, whether it's SQLite, uh, MySQL, Postgres, etc., all have this sort of uh, schema table. All have something similar. It's not going to look exactly the same, but have some sort of table that's managing data about the database that can be useful in some circumstances and I figured I would mention it here. Now finally if we kind of want to come full circle you might want to just completely get rid of a table you might want to drop a table. So the drop table operation just entirely drops that table from existence it no longer exists and by performing the drop table operation, it's gone, right? We, we run that operation, drop table users, and suddenly the users table is just gone from existence.